I know it's late, but Fight and Revive has returned, and you know what this means, don't you? It just means that you're going to get an episode today, which is Friday, and you're going to get an episode Monday, which is November 4th, which will be my last presidential election map prediction. So stay tuned for that the day before the election. But today, I just want to let you know and get that out of the way, because today I have a very important and a very interesting interview with Jonathan Barrisano, who is the new chairman of the newly formed Fluvanna Young Republicans. Fluvanna is a county about two hours northeast of where I live in southwest Virginia, so it should be a great time. He's going to talk about his organization, why he's starting it, and we're going to touch on a whole lot of topics. So stay tuned. It should be a fun one today on Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Okay, as I said, with us today, Jonathan Barrisano, the chairman of the newly formed Flavena Young Republicans. Jonathan, thank you for coming on the show. Pleasure to meet you and good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It is my pleasure. So I always like to start off by asking the guests I have on the show this, just asking for them to tell us a little bit about uh, their selves. So tell me a little bit about yourself so viewers can get to know you, um, just how you got involved in politics, You know your background. Um, you mentioned to uh, I saw you mentioned on uh, social media, I think it was, that you had uh, been in the military, so I'm sure you got some stories from that. So it doesn't need to be anything lengthy or anything, but just what's your basic, where do you come from, background, and then, um, yeah, what got you involved in politics? Uh, so I grew up in Connecticut. My, my wife, Charlotte, actually, and I both grew up in Connecticut. And uh, I'll kind of save some details. Uh, in 2017 is when I enlisted in the Marine Corps. That's kind of when a lot of... Th- a lot of things got started and so 2017 you know i that was that was a it was a big 2016 2017 big election year so i was i was kind of a little nervous he was either gonna be hillary or trump and thankfully we we saw how that turned out so uh, i got to serve uh four and a half years in the marine corps under the trump administration and after all my training and uh uh getting clearance and stuff like that i had I had the ability to serve on on the Marine One detail, so it's a presidential helicopter squadron. So that was that was an honor. It was a great time, and I can go down a whole rabbit hole telling stories about that, but don't think we have time for that today. So that that was kind of the, my Marine Corps career. After I got out of the Marine Corps, and, and while I was in the Marine Corps, obviously it was during the Trump administration, so super motivating seeing Trump and and being so close to him the the first family and even even pence and and uh, his family so it was you know i wasn't like really politically active before the marine corps during my younger years i was very you know i was raised in a christian conservative home so a lot of our those values were already established and so when i was growing up i always was trying to just seek the truth i always try to do my own research and we never really watched the news growing up so a lot of it was just on my own time researching, trying to get the the, actual, the facts and the truths when anything happened. So it wasn't until the Marine Corps I started to become, you know, okay, maybe this something like this, uh, a political route could be in my future. I like this. I like the idea of it. And um, we need more people like Trump, but we, we need more Christian conservatives as well in the political process. And so that's one big way we can make a difference. So during my Marine Corps career, that kind of manifested itself. And then I got out. And as soon as I got out, I wanted to get back in the military. I missed it. I missed the uniform, missed the brotherhood. So I was trying different ways to to get back in. And um, we actually, after, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was stationed in Quantico. So we lived in Frederick. We lived in Virginia. Loved it here. We loved Charlottesville. We were always out in Charlottesville. So we had the opportunity to move out to Charlottesville. And we, we moved here. Uh, I got a, a job working at the National Ground Intelligence Center. So it's the Army's Intel Center. So I'm an Intel analyst in my full-time job. And a part-time, I actually am the Army Reserves. So through that job, I got an opportunity to join the Army Reserves. So I got the, got the uniform back on. Not the same uniform, but that's okay. And uh, oh, I actually I support a unit up in, up in D.C. So that's been awesome. That's kind of the gist of my military career. A lot of um, doing security details and then now I'm kind of in the intel world. 
So that said, it's my my career in a nutshell. And now, real quick, because of military, talking military and government experience, I just you have to make a quick caveat that I'm doing this in my personal, private capacity, and nothing else. Um, it's important to say that. So outside of my military, my my employment, you know, the my want to get into the political atmosphere is has grown significantly. Obviously, we're starting the Fluvanna County Young Republicans. And for a while now, it's been hard to get involved just because of how much I've been moving, how much the one being the military active duty, you can't really do anything uh, and be really involved and have a, a voice while you're active duty. So that was hard. And then moving around and now finally being established here in the Charlottesville area in Fluvanna. It's you know, we're here for a while. I don't plan on going anywhere. And so doors just kind of started opening and I was like, all right, maybe this is something that I need to do and do soon. And that's exactly what happened. So we, we only been here two years now, uh, Fluvanna County. We've been here a little over a year. So, so that's what kind of led, um, you know, seeing the way the country is going, seeing how, how the younger generation seems to just not care and um, trying to get the the next generation to become good conservative leaders, uh, we need more Christians in government, and so I, I think that was a big pull of it as well. Just using it one as a DC in, in the political field is a ministry in itself, and so that's why uh, uh, that's another reason. You know, growing up, I actually thought some sort of ministry. I loved working and serving in my my home church with the kids ministry, the teens. And so for a while I, I thought like, okay, maybe something like this is going to be my future. Cause I really enjoyed it. I love pouring into these kids and I love, I love serving in the church. And I think over the years, it's kind of turned into possibly the political atmosphere to be that way to minister while also making a huge impact locally or at the national level. So we had the Fluvanna County Young Republicans, right? We had our, our first meeting tonight at 7 p.m. at the Fluvanna County Library. We're going to be hosting Congressman Bob Good, which is super exciting. But the Fluvanna County Young Republicans is, is you know, it's a small group, but it's the idea is to make a huge impact, especially in Central Virginia, just because of the lack of young Republican presence here in Central Virginia. Um, so... Uh, I know we're going to get more into why why we're forming it and, and and the the future of it and the vision we have for this, but that's kind of how we've gotten here, how I've gotten here, and why we want to get this going and why it's so incredibly important to reach the younger generation. It's the future leaders of the country. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of the gist. Well, cool. That's that's very neat. I see. Yeah, I'm learning all this for the first time. Obviously, just telling for the viewers' sake. But this is yeah, that's very cool. So. I kind of had it written down here, jotted down the questions about the Young Republicans. So you mentioned, and yeah, I would ask you just to expound on that. Why are you forming uh, FCYR? And kind of in the same vein, what are the priorities you're going to take with it? You know, um, most of the time your local Republican committee isn't doing a whole lot in, in terms of like in actual like the, the official Republican Party's committee. Obviously, Young Republicans is a little different. So what is it y'all are planning on doing in terms of, uh, I guess, activism? And that kind of all ties together. What's your purpose of forming it? And then what are you actually going to be doing as well? Great question. So we want to be different. We want to stand out because what we see right now in the young Republican world, these young Republican chapters, they do have these, these good outreach and, and door knocking and deployments, they call them. But outside of that, it's a lot of social gathering, parties, hanging out, which I don't see that being effective. And I think that's great to to socialize and network within your group. But our vision is it's a little bit bigger than that. And I think that's why we got this started, because we're sick of kind of seeing that atmosphere in the young Republican um, world. So we started this because one, we need to engage with the with the younger generation. We need to engage them, and we're, we want to engage, educate, and empower. So we want to engage them 
We want to um, educate them on who we are as a party and what what we're trying to do, the policies the Republican uh, Party is, is setting forth. And then we want to empower them to be the next leaders. We want to empower them. We, you know, it's always uh, important to have someone by your side when you're trying to do something like that. Um, doing something on your own is quite intimidating. So one, letting this be a stop for them to come gain resources, gain the help, gain the the uh, enablers to bring them up through whatever they want to do in the political world. So that's kind of our, that's our vision is to uh, engage the young Republicans, educate them, and then empower them to, to be the next leaders locally or up to the national level. It doesn't matter. So we don't want to be, of course, we're going to have social gatherings. We're going to have meetings like that. You know, the idea is to meet every other month to have a, a big meeting, to have to have someone come and speak to us like uh, like Congressman got Bob Good to come uh, like of his caliber to teach and educate the younger generation here. I think it's important to have these meetings, but also have a purpose for these meetings, not just come and have the same old meeting with the b basic things that everyone covers and then they go home and what comes out of it? Nothing. Uh, we love to have people of with different opinions, with uh, different views and, and who work in different areas to come and actually educate us and, 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 and question and answers and have a whole a time of question and answers where the younger generation here can actually ask, ask specific questions about certain policies or uh, security or the border or this issue or that issue uh, and not just us talking about the same old things that are going on in the country. So I think that's why it's going to be a little bit different and that's what we want and I, we're hoping that it expands outside of Fluvanna County. Well, that is extremely interesting. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned a lot of that because there's a couple of different things you touched on that I want to ask about later in the interview. Um, just kind of as we get kind of now that we're into this, um, just as the viewers continue to get to know you, I'm interested to hear what would you say some of your core beliefs are? And this doesn't have to be, I'm not angling anywhere for this to go. This could be a political thing. It could be a spiritual thing, a personally held conviction. Just what is it kind of... What f motivates you, I guess, is the question to keep you going. What's your motivation behind doing all this politically? Yeah, well, you know, as you know, Christ is who defines us. That's our that's our motivation. Um, the gospel is our motivation because ultimately we we understand. I don't know if you you listened the other day, but we were on the, the Rob Schilling show. And that was something that you know we were trying to really hone in on Um we understand that this party accepts everybody. We accept everyone of all religions, but I also understand that being a Christian is, is and following Christ is the most important and the gospel is the most important. So if we can do that also while doing this, I think that's going to be, that's the big motivation. If, because if we're not doing this for, for no purpose other than him, then there's no use in doing this. Cause obviously we live in a fallen world, the, the country, God is sovereign. So the, it's going to play out to his plan, but we are also here for a purpose. And so if we're not following that, then then we're not doing the right thing. I really appreciate you uh, saying that because I've often said that there is um, <clears throat> one of the reasons people, he Christians hesitate to be involved in, in politics a lot of the time is because they don't feel like um, – they don't feel like either they're they're really making a difference or they feel like it's it's this it's an earthly thing it's not worth our time so to speak we should be focused on spiritual things to basically boil down a lot of the argument but i've all, i've said for a while kind of what you were just getting at which is that i don't think you could ask for a bigger mission field in america than politics because in what in what uh arena is is our worldly uh, characteristics of you know bitterness and hatred and malice and everything else where more clearly is that displayed than in politics why or does a christian's light more brightly shine than in politics so i love that you said that because it's really important that i think that christians have a good testimony and are involved uh while being involved in politics so is it, if, if there's anything you want to add to that please do and if not we'll move on to the next question yeah you know i love what uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar, if your audience is familiar with Ali Beth Stuckey. She is a, an amazing uh, conservative voice right now, especially to women. And she, I love what she says. She says, 
politics matter because policy matters because people matter. And I think that's extremely important when people look at politics, especially Christians. And I think what throws them off is you have you have the lesser you have to pick between the lesser of two evils, which you always will. But you have to realize what are the policies behind those. And those was those are what's going to last longer than personality and, and whoever's actually holding that office. So that's my, my last comment on that. And I think, you know, you touched on it perfectly. Well, yeah, again, thank you for mentioning all that. I, lo I love to hear that's your uh, goal. It's very encouraging. Um, and that's kind of what drives you. So I, I love to hear that. Um, so moving on here, kind of the second half here, you mentioned earlier uh, a couple of times that your kickoff meeting, which is tonight, again, at 7 p.m., like you mentioned, I'll be there looking forward to it. Um, I think it's actually going on as the at the time this episode is premiering on YouTube and the various platforms. So if you're watching this, the meeting's actually going on during the live premiere. But you mentioned that the, the featured speaker tonight is uh, Congressman Bob Good, who is an outgoing congressman, um, you know, barring something uh, weird. Obviously, there's been uh, an effort by a lot of folks here in the area to to write him in, and I'm not going to weigh in on the merits of that one way or the other, but it's not impossible he could win re-election through write-ins, but that just doesn't really happen in this stage in America. So he's, he doesn't have the nomination of the Republican Party at the moment. I've covered him at length on this show, so I'm not going to go there right now. But, so for all intents and purposes, he's the outgoing congressman. So, uh, But he is your featured speaker tonight, and I was just wondering, um, why did you choose to invite Congressman Good as your speaker? Great question. Well, first, He's still our sitting congressman, and I think uh, people kind of forget that he's still sitting until January. <laughs> so, you know, he's still a, an elected official. He's still our representative. He still has a duty to represent you and I in D.C. until uh, January. So that aside, if you look at his record and you look at what he's done and you look at his ratings as a conservative, he's off the charts. And so... People, as you know, and I know you do, and you know the people around you and your, your audience really respect him, uh, respect his his ability to stand his ground and hold true to his faith. Um, it doesn't doesn't change on his conservative values. So I think that's why he stands out among most other elected officials or people that we were hoping to come to this meeting or even future meetings and, and looking at Congressman Bob Good as our first meeting or first uh keynote speaker to come for our first meeting, I think it's, it's going to be great. People really respect him, especially in Fluvanna. But it, it, not only is he respected, but he's respected because of the amount of things he's been able to do for the people of Fluvanna and the people of the 5th District. So I can't think of anyone better to come to be our, our first speaker at this meeting. I can't either. I was super, I was thrilled to see you um, <clears throat> were having him because for one, yeah, he is just a great speaker, but uh, and an awesome guy, godly man, obviously. But uh, it, it, I when I first saw the post from you, it's like I know I don't know anything about you. I just see the post on Facebook, and I'm instantly I'm like, well, if he's a Bob supporter, he's probably a pretty decent guy. So I was pleased to see that from you. Um, so let me see here. Sorry, just getting back over here. Um, you mentioned a minute ago, and I would like to touch on it again. Uh, that one of the ways you want Flavana uh, County Young Republicans to to uh, stick out, so to speak from the rest of uh, the Young Republican Federation of Virginia, which is the Young Republicans governing body, basically just Young Republicans of Virginia to make it easy. Um, for the viewers, um, you mentioned that you, you kind of wanted to stick out from, you want your organization, your chapter, to stick out from them, from uh, Young Republicans of Virginia, from the Virginia Republican Party officially more broadly. Um, so why is that? What is it, um, I don't, I'm not asking you to like, you know, take shots at anyone or anything. I'm just that you may you may not have anything to say in that front, but just out of curiosity, what is it specifically that you're hoping kind of uh, sets Flavana County Young Republicans apart from the rest of the governing organizations? Yeah, good question. So, I will give um, props to the local YRs and the the Young Republican Federation of Virginia. You know they. They do have a presence in, in certain areas. Uh, they do have a, a lot of chapters underneath them. And we're, we are obviously going to be a chapter underneath the Young Republican Federation of Virginia. Um, so, but our, our chapter itself, we do want to stand out, but we don't want that 
to be forever. We want to stand out because we want all the other chapters to follow suit. We want other chapters to get motivated to do what we're doing um, because we don't, we don't want to just say, Hey, you know, you guys aren't, aren't doing the right thing or you don't, we don't agree with this. We're going to stand out. We're going to put ourselves in a corner and you guys do your own thing. It's going to be a, a collective effort along with the, the local Republican committees as well. And that's something we touched on at their, their meeting on Tuesday, which is, Yes, we're going to be our own chapter. We're going to be our own organization, but it doesn't mean we're isolated from you guys. It doesn't mean we're isolated from the the statewide YRs. Now, do we disagree with kind of the direction and, and the efforts that they do? Yeah, kind of, because we don't really see a lot going on and a lot of things are a lot of organizations are dormant. And that's that's another reason why we started this is because we see so much complacency and laziness in the Republican Party. So not only we, we want to stand out, but we don't want that to last forever. We, we want everyone else to follow suit. We want to work together, not only with the YRs, but with the CRs, UVA, Liberty, uh, the big colleges here in the area. So, yeah, does that answer your question? Like, we don't want to be isolated. We don't want to not work together because it's it's all one big effort. And I think people forget that. Yes, we're going to be our own organization as a young Republican. But we can work together with the local Republican committees, the other YRs, to make this a huge success success across the state and not just our own organization being this successful organization here in Central Virginia. But we want everyone else to follow suit. That's the that's the goal. I got you. That's very well worded. Very good explanation. I appreciate that. That was exactly what I was looking for in terms of like as an answer that answers my question. That is so, um, <clears throat> yeah, appreciate that. Um, very well said. This was a question. Um, I, I had actually been talking to my cousin Luke, who I hope you'll get to meet tonight. He's been on the show a couple times, uh, helps out with the show. And uh, I think I mentioned this one to him, and, and we were interested to hear your take on it. Um, for lack of a better way to phrase it, do you believe that best, the best way to fix America? quote unquote, is it going to be through the Republican Party or through another means? You know, I saw that question and that's a really good question. And I think we have to take a step back and realize that the best way we're going to fix America or fix the world, one, is through Christ. And I don't care what party that goes through. We could have no parties. But if that's if that's the end state, then we succeeded. But when we look at the country, when we look at the national level, and we see what's going on between the Democrat and the Republican Party, we have to look at the values that they hold, the policies that that are being pushed. And I think right now, when we look at this 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 time, that what the Republican Party is doing, the policies that they want to push forward, um, the the goal to to get DEI out of things, to to get the family back together, to get to, to our basic fundamental things that we need to do before we move on. Um, I think the Republican party is going to be the best party to advocate for those, for those things. At the end of the day, you know, if it flips again, we know how, how Republican and Democrat used to be back in the day. It didn't used to be like this. So if, if it changes one day and, and there's one party that is conservative and they, they hold Christian values, they want to go back to our roots as a country then that's going to be how we're, we're, we're going to fix this. So it doesn't doesn't necessarily come down to a certain party unless we're looking at right now, today, before November 5th, we have to see, okay, right now, right in this place, the Republican Party is going to be what is going to help push these efforts to get back to our roots, to get back to the, the America that the Founding Fathers wanted and would have hoped to still see. So I think when we look at a very short timeline, the Republican Party is going to be what's going to help that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that 30 years from now. I got you. Yeah. Uh, always, you know, country over party, God over country, so to speak. And yeah, I, I completely agree. That's a very, again, a very good way of saying that. Thank you for that. Um, on that note, you mentioned the presidential election. I didn't have this one written down, but just out of curiosity, because this is getting filmed and released uh, four days before the upcoming presidential election, which is a pretty big one. Um, just personally, your your thoughts. You probably haven't. I don't know how much you thought about this, but 
how how do you currently see the election going? Who which candidate? Obviously, I'm sure I can guess who you want to win, but which way do you think it's going to go right now? Well, I think I don't I don't like looking at polls. I don't necessarily think they're the most accurate. I think uh, I think you know you and I agree that the the media needs something close. We need we need something close to get a good story. Now, am I going to come out and say this is going to be a landslide election? I'd love to say that, but I think if it's close, it's because they tried so hard to to rig it. But I do see Trump coming out on top. And if he isn't, then we all know what probably happened. I think we've put a lot in place as a Republican Party over the last four years to help mitigate a lot of what happened in 2020. So I think there's a lot more hope. Um, but I, I do. I mean, you can see what it's coming down to these these polls and uh, even the, the early voting turnout has been crazy uh, on the Republican side. You know, we're having, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 more this time uh, this year than it was in 2020 on the Republican side. And Democrats are kind of falling. So I am hopeful. Obviously, we will see uh when uh, November 5th comes down and it comes down to those couple states that want to take forever to, to count their votes. But I am hopeful. And I think, I think president Trump is going to come out on top. Yeah. As of now, I do tend to agree that way as well. And I think uh, the Senate's looking pretty decent for Republicans as well. Uh, I think it was two weeks, my last episode ago, I did my final Senate prediction of the year. And uh, I do think Republicans right now have a pretty good shot to count this with 50 at least 52 Senate seats, probably should get more like 53 or 54, but I'm unconfident in the uh, GOP's ability in some of those states where we have tight uh, Senate races. Um, the House, I think, is anyone's guess at this point. Uh, but yeah, very interesting nonetheless, uh, getting to watch that and the betting markets and all that. But um, yeah, so I, I do uh, appreciate that. It is a very interesting. That's going to be something to watch on election night and going to have to be trying to keep in mind you know, the biblical truth and keeping in the mind of... Uh, uh, Romans 8, 28, and promises along those lines as well. Um, so before we, uh, as we start to wrap up here, is there anything else you want to add? And I will just ask to kind of tee that up. Um, if you're a Republican in Flavana and is watching this, um, how do they get involved with FCYR? First thing is to come to our meeting tonight, 7 p.m. at the Flavana County Library. That's going to be your, your one-stop shop to get involved today, and you can do that in a couple hours other than that you can go to our website flavanayrs.com and you can uh, click the the membership link or just contact us to get involved uh, we do have leadership positions open we had the vice president the treasurer and secretary that we are looking to fill and we also need seven more members to work our way towards becoming an official chapter so that's that's an easy way um or or just um Follow us on, on Instagram or Facebook at the Fuvana underscore YRS um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And feel free to reach out to either of us personally. You know, I, I can, um, you know, if you want to put my info out there or attach the to the link to our website when you post this, you know, feel free to, to hit us up personally. We'd love to on Instagram. We'd love to talk to you. Um, even if you're not in Fuvana, obviously to be a voting member, you need to be of the age and in Fuvana County. But we want to talk to all the younger generation in Central Virginia or Virginia itself. So please don't hesitate. And we'd love to see you tonight, 7 p.m., Vanna County Library. Congressman Bob Good is going to be here. It's our keynote speaker, and it's going to be great. I agree. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. I look forward to uh, seeing you there. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on the show today. Uh, it's been one of my favorite interviews I've done in a while. So thank you so much for coming on, and I really do appreciate it. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.